well then, welcome back to the channel. Um, what I'm going to do with the deer is I'm just going to run through a solution I found for carrying me um, all my camera equipment and accessories on the drone and also then go for a ride and I'll explain to you what we've got lined up for the year. So the dilemma I had or, or the, or the issue I had was how to carry, carry the camera gear. Now I don't know if you noticed in a couple of previous uh, videos I either had a single pannier on which looked a bit daft or I had the top box on to carry the uh, the drone spare batteries for the cameras and uh, any accessories and whatever you. Now I think it was a bit of a pain in the backside having to, having to do that so I looked at some tank bags. Now without investigating too much uh, I, I picked one foolishly off sports bike shop uh, and it was the City Pro bag by SW Motec. Uh, I went, but when I got it home, tried it on this bloody stupid um, the the reservoir for the front brake lever uh, used to just well it touched the bag it more than touched the bag it caved it in so it was no good so I sent it back to sports bike shop and I've got to give them credit that um, they had no qualms and they exchanged it for us give us the money back as it was for it now just local uh, I found someone else who had the SW more tech bags as well but before I went and purchased another one I had a troll through the internet uh, on YouTube and I came across um, a YouTube channel uh, called a bike thing and Steve who runs that uh, channel he kindly done a, a full exercise of trying on SW Motex on a actual Triumph um, the new 1200 Explorer although it was the, the Explorer and not the GT Pro which has got the bigger tank it still give you an idea of what would fit and what wouldn't and lo and behold the one I bought doesn't fit if I'd seen the, uh, the video beforehand I could have saved all that problem but anyway the local shop which had these in stock he price matched sports bike shop so it means I didn't have to go back and back and forward just in case we had problems um, and he kindly let me take the micro bag which is the waterproof one this one which is the one I preferred um, I was after a waterproof one so that I don't need to worry once if I get caught in the shower and all that and I know at least the drone and the, the camera gear is going to be protected so he let me bring this home and I tried it on and it fit quite well in fact it fit, fit great it has to be in the fully back position um, but the, the downside is that you, you buy the bag and that and you've got to buy that blooming ring as well that fits onto the, the petrol filler um, the petrol filler there luckily this um this ring about bag mountain ring is the same fixings as the xr so happy days i'm taking this one up to scotland the triumph and i'll be taking the bmw when we go to spain and uh portugal but uh, uh, i'll elaborate more on that later on when we get out on the bike so happy days that this ring fits both so i can swap them both over i've also tried it with the um, cameras and the, the drone and all the accessories and the fit in there great plus there's a little bit extra space if I want to put me my phone or if I want to put um, some uh, my passport or wallet or something in there there's still that little bit extra room to get them in uh, batteries and also you've got space here if you want to put something else in there you've got about an inch and an inch so you got a couple of inches to put something you get a phone in there you got a phone whatever and it's uh, waterproof so it fits there uh, just nice perfect size magnet the catch and there we are the micro waterproof so I got this one and he said if it didn't fit I could take it back I either get my money back or I can try a different bag because I think the the normal the non waterproof version of this is slightly smaller in its dimensions um, because I think it, it expands uh, where this one doesn't with it being uh, fully waterproof so that, that was great so I'm happy with the bag now so I'll give that a try when we go up to Scotland it means I don't have the back there uh, carry around with a, a silly bloody uh, pannier on the on the side 
So what we'll do now is I'll get I'll get me gear, I'll get me helmet, helmet and that and we'll go out for a spin and I'll I'll take what I'll, I'll do is I'll take you up the it's a free of a little run of ours um up to a place called Falston which is just at the base of the uh, Kilda Reservoir and we usually go there for a breakfast or a, or a cup of tea or whatever it depends what time of day we actually hit there and um, but it's also a favorite run out of ours just just for if we just fancy going away for a, an hour or so uh, not too far um it's about 35 40 mile up the road so you can get there and back in an hour and a half and if you enjoy some of the content we'll put out just uh, hit that like button subscribe and uh hit the notification bell just to get a notification when we will put um, new videos up now then we're going on the b6318 which is the old military road from Hedden, heading towards Cholifad. so the first two or three miles just outside of um, coming out of Hedden on the wall Pretty uneventful. Steady way until you hit this point here, which is the we'll be crossing over the A68. Just going straight over and heading towards Cholifat. And hopefully the traffic uh, turn off off up with the uh, A68. You can see on the right hand side where I'm saying, as you can see, I hope you can see, there's a ditch to the right hand side of the road. That's the actual bottom. The Vallum is the ditch that the uh, Romans built on the north side, or the enemy side of the uh, wall. And that runs the full length of this road, where this road travels on to. Right across the country, towards Carlisle. Now as we're dropping down into a place called Cholifat, you can see the, the remnants now of the Roman wall just past them on the left, I think some more further down here on the left so the route of the Roman wall when we get across this bridge at Trollified turns off the left but we're not going that way, we're going to go straight ahead and head to up through Northumberland and head towards Kielda there's a quaint little bridge here over the, uh, the River Tyne we are there. A lot of uh, wild water swimmers usually come here on a Sunday morning. Now that hotel on the right, the George, is where the uh, French football team stayed when the Euros were held uh, in England a few years back now. So as I said before, we're heading up through Northumberland, yeah, heading towards Kielder. get a bit more interesting so we're heading towards a place now a place called War to see the sun getting out for a change we've had an absolute horrendous start of the year it's rained virtually every other day and the ground's never really dried out it's just starting to dry out now and we're heading into, into May Birds of Prey Centre So what, what have we got lined up for you this year? So up to now we've got um, in England we have a, 
a bank holiday at the back end of May, we'll have one at the beginning, the one at the back end. Why I'm seeing England is because I don't think Scotland does, they have an extra bank holiday for St Andrews Day. So uh, the May Day bank holiday, the second one, which is the last Monday in May, we are going to go up to uh, Fort Augustus again, up in Scotland. We're going to spend three nights there, which will be the Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and come home on the actual bank holiday Monday. Been up there before a couple of times, and there's a couple of new routes we're going to try out. But we're staying at the same hotel, the Caledonian, in Fort Augustus itself. So that's the first part of the year, and then we've got planned for the first two weeks in July. We are going to travel down to Plymouth, get the overnight ferry, the Brittany ferry, across the Sandman there. We're going to spend five nights in the uh, Protez, just have a little tour around there. Once again we're staying at a place we usually we stopped in before, which is the apartment that we uh, usually go to there. So we're staying at the apartment for five nights and then we are going to head down towards Portugal the northern part of Portugal, a place called Chaves, Chaves, or Chaves, don't know how to pronounce it, C-H-A-V-E-S. Um, and we're going to spend eight nights there. We've got quite a few routes planned around there, so we'll take some, uh, we'll take some video and we'll get things posted up. But both of our trips are here. And then the back end of August, which is another bank holiday here in the UK, we are going to, not on the bikes this time, but to watch bikes. We're going to the British uh, Superbike um, race meeting down at Cadwell Park. So I might do a video of that weekend, I don't know yet, see how things go. So that's, we've got three things lined up at the moment. Just as we're pulling to walk. Right, we're just dropping down now into Bellingham. Another little queer little bridge across the River Tyne. Uh, once we get down into here, across the bridge, we turn a sharp left and follow the route of the Tyne all the way up towards uh, Kielder Reservoir. Kielder 17 mile. It's a very awkward corner this, the camera drops away from you, it's very tight. But a few people have been into the, uh, through the fence into the, into the field there. Sí, sí. 
of the trees on the right with the, the River Tyne, which uh, the route we're following up here. Some travel lights on the roads. or an old uh, little church or chapel. We'll have fantastic breakfast here, really nice. Full Englishes. Full English breakfast, here we come. Back across the time. Falston. That's it straight ahead there. Tea room car park round the back. Falston Old School. So yeah, it was an old school. Not a church. Nice little queen little place. Come here and see what they've got on. Quite hungry actually. I might, uh, I might go for a nice breakfast. If not, a cup of tea. Here we go. Well, that wasn't hitting there before. Right. The Triumph Tiger GT Pro, which I've got here. Fantastic bike, it's coming up with two years now and I've got nearly 7,000 mile on it and I alternate between this one and the, the BMW S1000X or um, I've got three grapes which are minor grapes which could be improved the first one is from initiating the dash you've got a, a bit of a pregnant pause what has to think about it Still thinking, still coming up, and then you get it. So it takes about between seven and ten seconds for that to initiate. The second one is press the home button. You've got a little sub menu comes at the comes at the side and it moves the the um, the rev counter and whatever the information across, which looks great. I, I quite like the look of that. The only problem is you cannot customize any of these information. What I would like to have is is obviously the range to empty you can have your average mileage but i would like to be able to put the trip information i.e um trip one how actually far you've gone or anything else 
it's dead easy on the BMW. It's along the top of the screen there, and you just you just flick through the menu button on the on the XR, and you can change it. Or you could have the old odometer on here, but you cannot customize anything on there. So that's great number two. If they done that, it would be great. And grape number three is the heated grips. The heated grips are, I would say, warm, not hot, when they're on full power. Number three, um, compared to the BMW and actually the Ducati, the, the Multistrada has got really hot grips as well. This one here, that probably just, just medium, medium warm. So they could be doing with improving. But apart from that, I like everything else about it. So it has got the low end facility on this. If you press and hold the home button just for a couple of seconds, you see coming up in the in the screen there the flashing spring. I can actually feel the suspension dropping now. It's dropping right down. I'm flat footed both sides. I'm five foot ten with an inseam of thirty two inches. And I'm flat footed and my knees are slightly bent actually. Now it'll stay like that. Um, until you reach about 52 mile an hour and then it'll automatically go back up to its preset level the only downside of it is it and the new BMW uh, the JS 1300 it's an automatic it automatically lowers when you get below speed this one you've man you just got to press the button if you remember to do that everything's okay so let's have a look up to um, towards the the reservoir full as a gun, I just feel it lying down now. Put your ladder way up. We're now really only the length of Kildar Reservoir away from Scotland. Plus another, I'd say, four or five mile. See the back of the reservoir just over there. You can see it on the sat nav. So basically that's uh, my favourite little run out if I just want to get away from it all, just get away out for an hour. Up the falls and it doesn't have to be a full uh, breakfast every time. Sometimes I might just get a, um, just a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. So this is the North Tyne which goes down and it eventually um, meets up with another branch to form the River Tyne itself. And there's Falston just down in the in the bottom there, just below the actual reservoir. I think it goes on for about another 27 mile round to the to uh, Kielda itself, Kielda village. Looks a bit choppy out there. A few sailing ships.
Little car park, little restrooms and what have you. So we've just spun around there at the four car park, the other side of the dam. And um, we'll head on back. Back down. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, this little ride out just up the way uh, our favourite place really, the lads and that will go there for a on a Sunday morning for a breakfast as I said if we're heading north. Um, this Sunday I think the weather's looking good so we might go south and head towards um, North Yorkshire see what that day brings. So until then, until the next time, don't forget to smash that uh, like button, hit the bell for notifications and subscribe to the channel and we'll bring you some uh, adventures on our Scottish Scottish trip at the end of May and then uh, we'll pick us to a Portugal trip in the beginning of July. So until later on, we'll see you then. See you later.